Okay, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate the molar volume of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure (STP). And in this case, uh, the vol the, excuse me, the definition of the molar volume is the volume of one mole of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure. So we want to know what is the volume. Now, standard temperature and pressure means that we're going to use the temperature as either zero degrees Celsius or 273 Kelvin. Now, in this case, when we use the ideal gas law, we're always going to use Kelvin. And the pressure is either 1 atmosphere or 1.0 times 10 to the fifth pascals. And whether we use the atmosphere or the pascal depends on which um, gas constant we're using. And But we're going to always use the ideal gas law. So in both cases, we're going to use the ideal gas law. I'm going to write down the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law is, of course, as you know, PV is equal to N. R T. Now I said which gas law there are two, two which gas constant there are two common gas constants. So I'm going to do this problem both ways using both gas constants. But I think we'll get the easy one out of the way where we have this gas constant, which I just remember that the gas constant, you gotta remember it's point, but I just remember this gas constant as the O821 gas constant. Now it does have units and there are four of them. You gotta write them all down at the liter atmosphere and that is over mole Kelvin. All right, now you'll notice this gas constant has atmosphere in it as part of one of its units so therefore we're going to use one atmosphere when we put the pressure in. But we're going to solve for the volume so we want to know what is the volume and uh, we're going to take our gas law and we're going to solve for the volume and that means that the volume is equal to N R T over the pressure. All right? And we're going to put uh, plug our values in. We know that N is one mole because it says the volume of one mole. Now we're going to write the gas constant in. The gas constant is simply we're going to write the whole thing. As I remember, I just remembered it as. 0821. We gotta write all the units down. Liter atmosphere mole and Kelvin. And then we gotta put the temperature in. And the temperature, as we said, we always use when we use the gas yeah, the, uh, ideal gas law, we always use our temperature in Kelvin, 273 Kelvin, whether it's Okay, and then we're going to put all of that over the pressure because this is simply our N, R, and our T, which we have over here. We have to put that over the pressure, and I'm going to try to draw a nice long line here for my fraction, and we know that that is going to be one atmosphere. Okay, the pressure has to be in atmospheres when we use this gas constant. When we use the 0821 gas constant, it has atmospheres in here, so the pressure must be in atmospheres. Right, and the temperature must be in Kelvin. So we know that this atmosphere is going to cancel with this atmosphere, this Kelvin is going to cancel with this Kelvin, this mole is going to cancel with this mole, and we're left simply with liters. Okay? So when we do the math, which it looks a little complicated, but it's not really that complicated, it's just simply 1 times 0821 times 273 divided by 1, you come out with the molar volume, which is 20. 2.4 liters. Okay, so using this gas constant and one atmosphere and standard temperature and pressure, we come up with the molar volume is 22.4 liters. Okay, so that tells you that the, mol the volume of one mole of an ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters. If we were to use a different number of moles, a different temperature, or a different pressure, of course, we wouldn't get 22.4. But at one mole, at 273 Kelvin, in one atmosphere, any gas, does not matter the chemical composition of that gas, will have a volume of 22.4 liters. Okay, so let's go through and do the next one. The next one's a little more, a little messier, but also just as interesting. Okay, so once again, we're going to have what's the uh, volume of one mole of an ideal gas, standard temperature and pressure. Temperature is still going to be 273 Kelvin. And the pressure this time, we're going to use the other gas constant. We're going to use 
our pressure in pascals. But of course, let's just write down the gas the gas law first, which of, once again is still PV equals N R and T. And the gas constant for this one, this one is just the 8314, but it's 8.314. And the units for this one are the joule. So we have joules and we have mole and Kelvin on the bottom again, just like that. All right, now we're going to solve for volume. And so we're going to have the volume once again is equal to N R N T over the pressure. And the, vol the, the number of moles is still one mole, so we're going to write down one mole. And I'm going to write down the gas constant. So remember, it's uh, 8314, and it's joule over mole Kelvin. And then we're going to multiply that times the temperature. And since we're using the ideal gas law, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. And since it's standard temperature and pressure, it's 273 Kelvin. And we're going to put that once again all over the pressure. Okay, so we, up here again, it's NRT. We have N, R, and T. And the pressure, as we said, is going to be in atmospheres. Now, the gas constant doesn't have atmospheres in it, but it has joules in it. And we're going to have pascals that are related in, uh, in a way that I'll show you in just a moment. So I'm going to put down 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. All right. So let's see now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> let's see now if we can cancel our units. Okay, our moles cancel. And our Kel Kel Kelvin's cancel, but we have joules and pascals, and they don't cancel directly. Okay, but we have to convert, or we know that if we have one, if we have a joule, a joule is equal to a newton meter. That's the units for energy and the units for work. And then we know that a pascal is the equivalent, or is the units for pressure, and a pascal is equivalent to a newton per meter squared, right? Force applied on, a, on, a, on an area. And we can see we have a newton here on the top and a newton here on the top. Now we have a meter squared on the bottom and a meter here. And we know that if we multiply the top and the bottom by meter squared over one and multiply the top of this fraction by meters squared over one, then this meter squared cancels with this meter squared. And on the top, we have meter times meter squared. And that means that the units, just the units, are equal to meter cubed. So when we cancel all of our units, when we go through our joules, when we go through our pascals, we see that we're left with meters cubed. And so if we multiply now 1 times 8.314 times 273 divided by 1.0 times 10 to the fifth, we end up with a volume in this case that is equal to 0 0.0224 meters cubed. Okay, we got our meters cubed out of this big messy equation up here. We have meters cubed here, but we don't want our volume in meters cubed. We want our volume in liters. Now we can convert because we know that one meter cubed is equal to 1,000 liters, and you see that meters cubed cancels, that meters cubed cancels, and we are left with 22.4 liters. All right, so you can see once again, just like we did in the first example, we come up with the molar volume of an ideal gas, a standard temperature and pressure is 22.4 liters. doesn't matter the chemical composition. All we know is it's an ideal gas. It's a standard temperature and pressure. It will have uh, a volume of 22.4 liters. And once again, if you use a different number of moles, a different temperature, and different pressure, then we'll get a different volume, okay? But that's what it is for an ideal gas law. Oh, excuse me, for a molar volume.
All right, so there you go. I think that was uh, very interesting. It's a nice way the units all work out. I think uh, if you follow those steps, plug the numbers in, then you can get that and you will be successful too. Thank you very much and thanks for watching.